seconds into the fourth rotational crew mission on board Dragon and the Falcon 9. The nine Merlin 1D engines uh, on the first stage are beginning to throttle down in preparation for max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures, so we'll throttle down the engines in preparation for that event. Vehicle is supersonic. So we've passed the speed of sound. We're already Stand max by. Q. And there's our call out for max Q. Stage one, throttle up. So right after max Q, we will begin to throttle Stage those one, engines Bravo. up again. Copy one Bravo. And one Bravo. So we're in the second and final abort mode for the first stage. Continuing to get good performance, though. The crew already pulling in excess of two Gs. And coming up next is going to be a couple of events in rapid succession. Yep, in about 10 seconds here, we're going to be performing engine chill on the second stage MVAC engine. Um, and then in about a minute, uh, we're going to start off with Miko, also known as main engine cutoff. This is where those nine engines that you're seeing uh, ignite on, uh, being lit up on screen, those are going to cut off uh, in preparation for stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from one another, and then the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to carry our Crew-4 astronauts to orbit. And we heard that MVAC chill has started. Stage one, throttle down. The nine Merlin engines starting to throttle down. Standing by for Miko. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Right. So Miko, stage separation is confirmed. Stage two off. And uh, condition. We see that Copy second stage alpha. engine light. We're in two alpha, the second abort mode. The second stage is lit continuing to carry the Crew-4 astronauts onto orbit. Uh, and this is a fantastic view. On the left-hand side, this is the first stage, now separated from the second stage, but it's still being illuminated by that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, so right now, the first stage is making its way back to Earth to attempt its fourth landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Uh, the crew is on the opposite, opposite side of the engine that you see on the right-hand side of the screen. They are continuing with their journey to outer space. Seeing good performance on that lone Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. The crew's GLO dips right when we hit that separation event, and it's gonna continue to build up now. Shared acquisition of signal Bermuda, that means we're Dragon, now- Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Freedom copies, nominal trajectory. That was our guidance, navigation, and control officer. Nominal trajectory, Dragon's pointed in the right direction, continuing its flight to orbit. We heard Bermuda called out. That's one of the ground stations now receiving telemetry from the Dragon as it continues its path uphill. So we'll, be, we'll have the dueling boxes here for a while as the first stage makes its way down. That second stage gonna continue firing until about a little over eight minutes into the flight. Doing the heavy lifting now. The first stage has um, a couple of events itself in order to, to land on a drone ship. So uh, at T plus seven minutes and 25 seconds, it's going to start its entry burn. It's gonna be one of two burns. 
Uh, this is where three of the nine Merlin Dragon engines SpaceX nominal trajectory. on the first stage will relight uh, and burn for about 30 seconds in order to slow the vehicle down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Acquisition of signal, New Hampshire. All right, now on the New Hampshire ground station, another call out there from our guidance, navigation, and control officer, nominal trajectory. Second stage, stage continues to power. Level. Call out just then, propulsion is nominal, the engine performing as expected. Crew pulling a little more than one and a quarter Gs right now. Again, that's gonna continue to ramp up, peaking just before we get to that second stage cutoff. Yep, this, this, this single engine here, Dan, can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space, so um, they are definitely feeling it. And we're already about 200 kilometers in altitude. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Fleet of copies, nominal trajectory. Great call out that uh, we are headed in the direction that we need to, and we, we just heard from Shell, the commander. And we should get one more of those trajectory check-ins in about 30 seconds from now, and then we'll start to hit our events in rapid succession as the first stage continues to make its way back home. And the second stage will start to wrap up its job of delivering these astronauts into orbit. Yeah, we don't see it on screen right now, but the first stage is making its way back to our drone ship uh, in about... Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. In about 30 seconds here, it's going to start its entry burn. And there was the other call out that uh, you, you were mentioning, Dan, about the trajectory. Things, again, continuing to look very, very good for the ascent portion. So for those just joining us, we are just under eight minutes into flight. We have four astronauts as part of the crew for operational mission. You can see on the left-hand side, this is our first stage with three of nine Merlin engines reignited and slowing down the first stage before we hit the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. So this first stage has one stage more one burn left. Burn shut down. That's going to happen just before the T-plus nine-minute mark, and then we'll attempt a landing for the fourth time on a drone ship that's currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. And so as that entry burn completes... Terminal guidance. We're in the final stages of the second stage's flight into orbit. We're about to pass through several of the different abort phases which essentially correspond to areas along the very northeastern seaboard of the U.S. and then across the Atlantic and off the coast of Scotland. But continuing to get call-outs that stage two propulsion is nominal. Copy, Shannon. And the call-out of Shannon, Ireland, that's... Stage uh, one transonic. Indicative of our final abort zone. And after this uh, second stage engine shuts off its engine, we are going to be listening for the confirmation of a good orbit, which tells us that the if crew and Dragon are where they need to be in stage orbit. Landing burn. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. And that was the call that we wanted on the second stage. Here's a fantastic stage view. Copies. We're glad to be in orbit. Of the Dragon, first stage. SpaceX launch escape system is disarmed. Fantastic view of the first landing stage. Deployed. Landing legs have been deployed, returning back to Earth for a fourth time. And just like that, a fourth landing as part of the Crew 4 mission. You can hear the applause behind us.
But prior to this, acquisition signal, Newfoundland. We saw the crew, we, we heard that the crew uh, has been successfully inserted into a good orbit. And this is them uh, in zero G, uh, yeah. two of them for the first time. And getting a look, it looks like we might have a couple of zero G indicators. I see a turtle in Bob Hines's hands. That is the nickname for the astronaut class from 2017, of which he and Jessica Watkins were a part. I believe we've got a monkey floating over by Samantha Christopheretti. <laughs> but first, <laughs> first view of Crew 4 on orbit, experiencing microgravity. They're still attached to that second stage, which at this point is going to continue to coast for a couple of minutes. It's got small reaction control thrusters on the upper part of the second stage that can be used to cancel out rates, essentially making sure that they're on a stable coast before we get to that separation event, after which we'll see Dragon Freedom flying free for the first time. We've got, yeah, a couple of stowaways. The, the turtle class really does seem to be taken over now uh, with a turtle zero G indicator. All right, we should be just about a minute away from that separation, after which a number of activation uh, checkouts occur automatically, first checking out 12 of those Draco maneuvering thrusters uh, all around the service section of the Dragon capsule. Uh, we'll also uh, start to get ready for the nose cone opening, uh, which it stays closed for the, the flight uphill to help protect uh, all of those guidance, navigation, and control sensors. It's also covering four of the Draco thrusters that we're going to be using for uh, providing the majority of the thrust, the push uh, for these different phasing burns as Dragon chases down the space station. But all right, standing by for separation. So typically, we'll get a shot from the second stage, looking at the unpressurized service section of the Dragon. Dragon there it is. What a magnificent view. And looking like a good separation, good rates. Dragon Freedom flying free for the very first time. So again, now those 